time to start planning your ceramics project. You guys are going to be creating multifunctional plates for this project. So multi means many, function means to use. So there's going to be many different ways to use this ceramics piece. The best part about ceramics is that not only does it look really cool, it also has multiple purposes. So you guys are going to get to decide the function of your plate. And just so you know, a plate, just like what you eat off of, is going to be a little bit thinner and usually a little bit wider than what it is thin. It doesn't really have a big divot like a bowl. It kind of lays a little bit more flat like this. So you guys are going to roll out a slab and the slab is going to be about the size of your finger. It's going to be no bigger than six inches by six inches and you're going to end up carving out these recessed areas which are these things that you can see with shadow here. These areas can hold different things. Uh, they can be little containers for whatever you decide your function is. So this sheet is really all about planning out the form or the three-dimensional shape of your plate and also the function or the purpose of your plate. So the very first thing that you want to do is come up with the function of your plate. There are so many different ways that you can go about this, but I did put some examples here just to give you some ideas. You could do a ring or a jewelry tray, tray a coin tray, a watercolor palette, that's what I'm going to personally use, a food plate with lots of yummy snacks, an air plant tray or any type of plant tray actually, a spoon rest, or a salsa if you're very fancy and drink out of a teacup. So go ahead and decide what your function's gonna be. If you can't come up with ideas, maybe write a few different ideas down. I'm going to write watercolor palette because you guys know me, you know how much I love watercolor. Also a note on this, Mrs. Cantrell and I are hoping that we can later use these um, plates as ink trays for a future project. So kind of keep that in mind that would be a really cool, again, multifunctional use. Even if you intend to use it in, with food, it can also be used for art. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna decide the form of your plate. So you need to figure out what is my overall shape gonna be? I have some different examples here that I'd like to share with you, but all my examples follow two different options. Option one is to kind of stick with more geometric shapes. So something that's very math-based, things like circles and triangles and octagons and rectangles and many different things like that. You can even get more specific and do like parallelograms and have different shapes crisscrossing over each other. The option two is organic shapes. So these are shapes that are based off of nature or are really just freeform shapes. So some examples that I have here, I have a peacock, I have a monstera plant, and I have a rainbow. Those are all examples of more organic shapes. Then I have a circle with some polygons. I have an octagon with some different types of, um, I guess those would be like rounded trapezoids and circles. And then I have some ovals that I overlap. So this is what I'm talking about. Like I basically made a clover, but really it's just a bunch of ovals overlapping each other. So you guys need to decide just what form do you want your plate to be. And you're going to put it here. So I would choose something that you actually, you know, like because you're going to be working on it. So I have some other examples here. I kind of started to think about people in my life and what they would like. <laughs> so my one friend is obsessed with moons. So I did a big moon shape and then I did kind of more geometric shapes in the middle, but little moons around a full moon. Uh, my boyfriend is a firefighter, so I have the EMS logo here, and then I have the fire stamp in the middle. Of course, um, I have my friends are artists, so I have a big paint palette here. This is for Mrs. Cantrell. It's a squirrel. She loves squirrels. So the form is, of course, a squirrel. Maybe she would put some squirrel nuts in here, I said, for the function. You guys know Miss Greer. She loves robots. <laughs> Uh, and she really likes office supplies, so I thought she could put like binder clips here, paper clips here and stuff. So whatever form you end up going with, there's a few things that you have to consider when you're doing this. You're going to end up just starting out by drawing the outline of your form. So you're going to stick with the, again, the outline means the outside edge. For this one that's right below, it literally was just a circle. But for something more complicated, like Mrs. Cantrell Squirrel, I had to do the outline of the squirrel. Now, if you need to first go in and draw through the form and draw all these lines, just so you can make sure that you have something that's accurate, please do that. But just know in the end, the very first step of the project is gonna be to cut out this outside shape, none of the inside stuff first. 
So I have a helpful hint for you. I recommend on Google Images looking up whatever you want your form to be and then writing the word silhouette because that's going to get you what just the outline looks like. Another word that you can look up is clip art and that can help break things down into basic shapes too. So I haven't done this yet, but I thought it'd be really cute to make like a little cupcake tray that maybe can hold sprinkles and can maybe hold my cupcake while I'm decorating it. I think that'd be really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down cupcake. And following my directions here, I want you to make sure that when you do the outline that you use as much of the box as possible. So try and go from top to bottom and side to side. You might have some empty space on the corners, just like you guys see that I do on all these different examples. That's bound to happen. But see how I really try to stretch all of my, my designs from side to side and top to bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out my cupcake now. So as you guys can see, I went through the form to try and figure out like how to make the cupcake look best and the most realistic. Now I'm going to take a darker pencil and I'm just going to focus on the outline that I have because again, that's what I'm going to end up cutting out. So with a darker line and a thicker line, I'm just going to go around the outside of my cupcake. So as I'm drawing this, I figured out that I just changed the function of my uh, piece. I'm actually not gonna do a watercolor palette. I'm gonna do a cupcake holder that can hold my cupcakes when I decorate. So I need to make sure to make that notification there because that's gonna affect how I move on to this step. Now, when you move to this step, you need to have at least three recessed areas. This particular plate that I have has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a whole lot, but this, the intention of this, the purpose of this, the function of this was to use this as a watercolor palette. So this way I can mix up nine different colors and it's gonna be great. When I have something like Mrs. Cantrell's squirrel holder, I don't need to have as many contain our little recessed areas because I thought maybe she could put some peanuts here, some walnuts here, maybe some pine nuts. I don't even know if squirrels can have pine nuts but she has little areas that she can put things. For my boyfriends, I think he's gonna use this as a coin tray, so I really just want a big middle spot and maybe just some accent spots for recessed areas. I already told you guys with Miss Greer, I was thinking that maybe this could be paper clips, maybe this could be binder clips, maybe this could even be some mini pens that she has. So when you think about the recessed areas, you really have to look back and think about the function of what you want the plate to serve you. So. What I would do is you don't necessarily have to have the recessed areas match the outer edge. For example, in my rainbow, this was the intention of this or the function of this was a watercolor palette too. It doesn't all the way follow a rainbow. Like it doesn't have the lines that go all the way from the right all the way to the left. It kind of has these curved rectangles. Um, so not everything has to follow it. You can, like this peacock and this monstera leaf, these definitely follow uh, what the shape is and what the inside details are. But other things that I have here, you know, I did a circle, but I did moons inside the circle. That doesn't necessarily follow the shape. Same thing with this EMS star. You know, I could have just made rectangles that went inside the shape, but I didn't. I put a different shape inside of a shape. It really depends, again, on the function and the look that you're going for. So because this is going to be a cupcake holder, I know that I want to make the center right here a circle because that's where I'm gonna stick my cupcake and then I want to make a just a few different wells maybe a little bit bigger that are going to hold some sprinkles maybe I can even put my knife down in one of them while I'm decorating my cupcake so when you do your recessed areas it's important to use hatching lines to indicating where these are going to be carved away that way you know that's gonna be the areas that are going kind of away and are gonna have shadow. So I just like to make sure I like where they are and you can use hatching or cross hatching to do this.
So one more tip that I have for you guys is don't make any part of your recessed area smaller than your pointer finger. The reason is when you guys get to this clay project, you're gonna have to smooth. So look what happens when I get here. I can't smooth to that point anymore. So to smooth into these areas, I had to use the very tip of this wooden tool and with very gentle and pressure and a lot of patience, I had to smooth this in. It's still not perfectly smooth. So if your details are the smallest part of it, meaning the smallest part of your shape is the size of your finger, then you can smooth with your finger. If it's smaller than your finger, you're going to have a lot of difficulty and you're going to have to do this. You can do it, but I recommend not going smaller than your pointer finger, which none of my shapes are. All right, so we would like you to make sure that you take a photo of this page and submit it in the Cami assignment. That way that we know that you are ready to move on to the next part of your clay project and you're ready to get some clay in your hands, guys. Can't wait to see what you create. And if you find yourself struggling to come up with some different ideas for your multifunctional plate, on your Google Slides presentation, there are some examples here for you. Uh, some of these things are for food. Some of these things are for toddlers. Some of these things are for puppy dogs. You can see a jewelry dish here. There's this really great company that makes bamboo plates in the shape of a bunch of different types of animals. So take a look at these examples if you're kind of struggling with how to make the different recessed areas of your plate. Good luck.